Hi everyone, today we are uh, combining polynomials and what polynomials are is a step from what we did before. So the idea of polynomials are x plus 2 and we're going to add that to x plus 5. That's a simple poly polynomial, we call these binomials. Sorry, our, what we're doing is polynomials. Okay, polynomials. Many, many nomials, many things, many nomials. That's M, I, nomials. Okay. Polynomials, just like polyjuice, you can turn to whatever you want. So polynomials are are just terms that have many parts, right? X, X squared uses like X, X squared, X cubed, and then a constant. Okay, and they're always written in order. But we're going to talk about adding polynomials today. So what if I have X squared plus two, sorry, X plus two, and I want to add it to X plus five. Well, it's like apples and oranges. You put all the apples together, the oranges together. You don't want to mix stuff up. So if I just say x plus 2 plus x plus 5, we can get rid of the parentheses because there's nothing multiplying the parentheses. So what do we have? We have x plus x. So what's x plus x? That's going to be 2x, and 2 plus 5 is 7. Now, what does 2x actually represent? Well, didn't we say multiplication? Is a fast way of addition? Isn't multiplication a fast version of addition? Now let me give you an example. If I say 2 plus 2 plus 2, we say instead, well, 2 plus 2 plus 2, I have three twos. Don't we say instead, we can say 3 times 2? Okay. If I say 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5, we say, hey, I have four fives. 5 times 4. And of course, we write it backwards also. If you want, you can write 4. I have 4 fives. Both ways are perfectly fine. And this is what we're doing here. If I say x plus x is how many x's we have? We have 2 x's. Uh, we can write parentheses or not. We don't need to write the parentheses. 2 x's. What if I have x plus x plus x? Addition is a slow way of doing things, but multiplication is the fast way of doing things. So multiplication is just a fast way of addition. Now, does this work with actual numbers? Let's replace the numbers again. If I said this is 2 plus 2 plus 2, well, aren't we saying x is 2? So 3 times 2 is 6. And yes, 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6. So why can't I combine the 2 and the 5 with the x's? Why can't I find the 2 plus 5 in the x's? You guys ever go to the movie theater and you save a seat for a friend? Right? You save a seat. You're saying, hey, he's not there right now or she's not there right now, but they'll be back. That seat's taken. And that's really what we're doing here. We're saying, hey, x plus 2 plus x plus 5. We're combining the like terms because we don't know what it is. The seat is empty. Yes, but, but we know we're going to put someone there. My best friend's coming right now. So we have to leave it. We can combine everyone else. But we have to leave that blank till we know what to plug in. And then they never arrive. Yeah, right. <laughs> they found another, another seat elsewhere because they couldn't find you. Yeah. It's so scary when that happens. Oh, this seat's taken. This seat's taken. And then your friend doesn't show up because they sat someplace else. And you're like, you lied to everyone. Okay. So here's the idea. Is that when I'm combining like terms, and this is what we call combining like terms, these guys are both x's and they're the same type of number. So we can say how many x's do we have? Well, we have two of them. And I'm just waiting for us to say what x is going to be. Now, I want to say this. I'm going to show you an example of two different possibilities. If x was 3 and if x was 5, let's see if this would still work out. x plus, and we're going to use x plus 2 plus x plus 5, and x plus 2 plus x plus 5, okay? So if we simplify it, we said we're going to get 2x plus 7, right? That's what we said we're going to combine the two. Now, I want to do this problem with each of these to show that, hey, if I plug it in 3 and 3, that's 3 plus 2 plus 3 plus 5, we end up with 5 plus 8 is 13. Okay, that's 13. All right, plug in 5 here. 5 plus 2 is 5 plus 2 plus 5 plus 5. That's a 7 plus 10 is 17. All right. 
Now if I instead just used our simplified version, our already combined version, and I plugged in a 3 here and a 5 here, right? Isn't that what x is? x is 3 on my left, x is 5 on the right. We have 6 plus 7 is 13, exactly what we said we were going to get. We have 10 plus 7 is exactly 17, exactly what we thought we were going to get. Which of these would have cost me less time? And I would argue that we would always want to combine them first and we could just jump to our answer. It's like this. Do you wait till your friends show up to start to start setting up our party? Or do you set up the party first so when they come up, when they show up eventually, you guys can party? Right? You guys ever have a movie night at your house? You normally don't wait till your friends show up to prep everything. You prep everything beforehand so when they get here, you guys can just start to party. And that's what I'm saying here. Instead of waiting for us to write what the number is, why don't we just combine everything so that we're all ready to party so once you guys arrive, we can just plug in our value and we're good to go. And this saves us time in the long run. And not only does it work for x as 3, it works for x as 5. It works for any value because what happens now is I can use any value. And this problem here is so much easier to use than my original one. Okay, let's look at something a little bit different. So the argument is that it saves us time to combine like terms. It saves us time. Now, let me give you another one. So this is what we call a trinomial. And a trinomial is going to be three terms, x squared plus 3x plus 1. And we're going to add that to 2x squared minus x plus 4. Okay. So these are polynomials. We call them trinomials specifically because instead of many, like and infinitely many, just three. Try. Let's try. Trinomial. Okay, so for this trinomial here, we're going to say on my left, okay, what is x squared combining with x squared? What is x combining with x? And what is 1 combining with a 4? So you notice that we're only combining terms of similar type. Why? Why can't I combine x squared and x? Now on the side, why? x squared cannot combine uh, wait, sorry. x squared plus x is not 2x squared. Okay? Well, Ms. Go, there's, there's x's, aren't they? But they're different types. Think about first graders and second graders. First graders and second graders, are, they look alike, don't they? They're both kids on a, on a, in a playground, but they're different. You guys remember in elementary school when you became the sixth grader? Or the seventh grader, right? Whatever your elementary school was. Or even last year when you guys were eighth graders. Weren't you guys like king of the hill? And 8th graders are totally different than 7th graders, right? Which are totally different than 6th graders. They're different types, so we can't combine them together. Now, if I give you a number, let's say x is 2. Uh, that's 2. That's, a, that's 2. x is 2. Fine. Just, just to see, if I plug in the numbers, would this have worked? 2 times 2 is 4. And 4 plus 2 is 6, okay? On the right side, though, this is not the same number. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is... This is 8. They are not the same thing. You cannot, cannot, you cannot combine terms with different exponents because they are not the same thing. Why is that? Because if you look here, the x squared is really a 4, not a 2. x is, if I plugged in 2 here, this is really the number 4. And if I plug in a 2 here, this is really the number 2. These are not the same number. You can't say 4s. And twos are like terms. They're different sets. And we don't know what the number is going to be till we plug it in. So what we do is we leave the x's alone. x squared is on a different level than x's. So what I'm talking about here is re reiterating this, is that when I'm looking at x squares and x squares, I can only combine them together because of the same type. Now x plus 2x is we have 3x squares total. How about the 3x's here? 3x minus x. We only have 3 minus 2, uh, 3 minus 1, I'm sorry, is 2x's. And 1 
plus 4 is 5. Which one is easier to look at? Once you simplify it, it's easier to look at it once we simplified it. And it's easier for me to plug in numbers. If I want to plug in 1, 2, 3, or 5, I could plug it in here. 1, 1, 1, 1. Sure. But isn't less work after I simplified it? After I've grouped everyone together? What happens when we subtract? Let's talk about subtracting now. Subtract, subtracting, let's say, A from B. We're subtracting A group from my B group, okay? So we use the same exact problem. X squared plus 3X plus 1. This is my A group. And we're going to subtract it from my B group. 2X squared minus X plus 4. And oftentimes we just say, oh, subtracting, you just, you just kind of get rid of stuff. But I want you guys to do this algebraically. So please take a look here. We're going to say the front minus the back. So who does the negative sign reflect on? The front or the back? Now, I'm going to give you guys another way of looking at it. If I write 5 minus 3 versus 3 minus 5, who does the negative sign go to? The front or the back? It goes toward the back. It goes toward the back term. Because these answers are totally different. If I say 5 minus 3, we end up with 2. Sure. If I say 3 minus 5, we end up with negative 2. And those are totally different answers. We have this issue in English also. If you are 5 years old, you're not 5 years old, and, and your brother is 3 years old, you are 2 years older than him. But if you are, if, you're, if we flip it around, we don't say he's negative 2, we say younger. Right? We use a different word in English. And in math, we denote the difference with a positive and negative sign. If you're three and your brother's five, you are three years younger than him, or two years younger than him. Right? If you're five and he's three, you're two years older than him. If you're three and he's five, you're two years younger than him. And we denote that in English using words like younger and older. And in math, we denote that using a negative sign. So order does matter. So here's what we're going to do. So this skill here is distributed property. We're going to distribute the negative sign. So I'm going to rewrite it as x squared plus 3x plus 1 minus 2x squared plus x minus 4. Take a look here. I changed the signs. I changed the signs. Everyone got flipped. You guys all have like a bad house on your block, don't you? You guys all have a house where your mom says, oh, stay away from those people. Anyone who lives in that house, they're not good people. That's the idea. You're not good people. It's not the fact, okay? They're probably nice people. It's just everyone has a house on their block that your parents say, stay away from that house. You be careful of those people. And that's the idea. Everyone in that house is a negative sign. Wait, okay, now we can combine like terms. We have x squared and x squared. What's, what's x squared minus 2x squared? That gives us negative x squared, or negative 1. We don't have to write the 1. What is 3x plus x? That becomes 4x now. Combining like terms, I have 4x's. Adding, so multiplying is a fast way of adding. And 1 and 1 minus 4, that gives us negative 3. Okay, so the goal here is being able to combine like terms, adding and subtracting, and knowing what to do with them. Okay, we want to combine like terms. X squares can only combine with X squares. X's can only combine with X's. And constants, this is a constant because there's no X here, is not going to change. One can only combine with negative four. And that is the big takeaway of this main lesson. Now, a lot of different ways uh, people have come up to teach this over the last uh, you know, 10, 15 years. I've been teaching almost 15 years now. And I remember seeing this in a classroom demonstrated. I was like, uh, that seems like a little much. But that's, that's me. That's the way my brain works. Now let's go ahead and see if your brain sees this as it makes sense or it might be a little too much. So we're going to look at Z.2. And we're going to do polynomials with algebra tiles. So the first skill here is to 
write what you see. We can see here that x squares are different shapes than x's, that are different shapes than constant numbers. And they want us to just write that out. So how many x squares do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, great, thank you. We have 7. Let's go ahead and write 7x squares. I'm going to use that sign. X. We have 7x squares. That makes sense? Sure. Because I have 7, literally, I have 7 x uh, algebra tiles. I have 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 7. How many x's do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We have 9 x's. Okay. We have 9 x's. Oops, I forgot to say plus. Plus. Those are positive. Plus 9 x's. Great. How many constants do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Plus 5 non-x's. And that's really what they want you to do. Okay, I think you guys hurt your brain. It's Friday. I'm going to submit that. All right, well done. We're going to do this one more time. How many x squares do we have here? We have, I see 1, 2, 2 x squares. 2 x squares. And I have a single one there, right? Plus 1. Keep, they're just having you make sure you understand how to read these algebra tiles. All right, thank you. Okay, this one looks a little more trippy. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Great, great. I have 9 x squares. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I have 9 x's. I have plus 9 x's. Do we have any constants, any singles floating around here? Nope, we don't. Okay, that's it. That's really what they want you to do for this uh, simple practice today. Okay? Now let's look at our next practice. Uh, Z.3. So now we're going to go ahead and add and subtract algebra tiles. Okay, so they not only wrote out the polynomial, they gave it out in our tile form. So let's take a look. Do I have 8 x squares? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yep, I have 1 x, 1 x, and I have 4 constants. 1, 2, 3, 4. Easy peasy. On our right, we have 1 x squared. Yes, we have 8 x's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then we have 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 and 3 make 10. Yep, we have enough. So what happens when I add like terms? Remember how we said x squared and x's are different shapes? We have 8 here. We have 1 here. We have a total of, total of 9 x squares. Okay, how many x's do we have? We have 1, and we said we have 8 here. 8 plus 1 is 9. Okay, we'll write 9 plus 9 x, x's. All right, and how many constants do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. No, don't we have 10 up here? And 10 and 4 add up to become 14. We don't have to count these numbers. But they are there to, so we can visually see that they are different objects. They're totally different. So that's why we don't want to mix them up. Okay, submit. Let's do it. Okay. Now, sometimes you have x squares, sometimes you don't. So how many x squares do we have? Now, take a look here. Also, this problem is now a subtraction problem. It's a subtraction problem. So we're going to cancel out some of these. Let's go ahead and look at this visually. We are minusing the front from the back, okay? Front from the back. So if I subtract them, let's see. We have x squares. We have 9x squared in the front. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Thank you, I got 9. And then we're going to subtract 6 of these. 6x's, sure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five, six. 
That's a lot of work. Can we just say 7x minus 6x is 1x? And we do. We only have one positive x left. How about our constants? We have 7 and 4. It's 7 minus 4. Let's cancel 1, 2, 3, 4. And we have 1, 2, 3 left over. And 7 minus 4 is 3. So this is just a visual way for us to look at this. But folks, what if I wrote what I taught previously? And if I distribute the negative sign, that's a minus 6x minus 4. That's combined like terms. I have a 7x and a 6x, those combine. And then I also have a 7 and a negative 4. And we have a 9x squared with no, no friends. 9x squared. 7 minus 6 is 1. 7 minus 4 is 3. And that's it. So in this activity, you're going to only go up to 50. And you want to be careful here because what if they give you two negatives? Well, just like in regular numbers, what is negative 3? Oh, sorry. Now this problem here, it's tricky because you might think, oh, we're adding. Look at the problem again. Are we adding? Take your time. Look at the problem. Are we adding? We're subtracting. So we're subtracting a negative value, and we mentioned before a negative of a negative flips to a positive. So we're going to rewrite this as negative 3 x squared minus 6x plus 7, and let's distribute the negative sign. That actually becomes a plus 2x and a minus 4. I'm making a mental note that we do have like terms here. And if I do cancel out, see what we're doing, if we are, are going to cancel out, we're going to cancel out x and x. We're going to cancel out our 1, 2, 3, 4, right, 4. What do we have left? We have negative 3x squared. I still have 1, 2, 3, 4 minus 4x. These are negative, And we still have a positive 2. Oh, sorry, not 2, 3. Right? And if I say negative 6 plus 2 is a negative 4, 7 minus 3, and the 7 minus 4 is 3. It's just a visual way for them, for you guys to experience this also. And the last part about today's activity is us working on z dot. z dot 4. Oh, turn it. This is back to the original way that we had started off this problem. Not using algebra tiles, but just looking at like terms. So in order to do this, if it's a minus sign, we're going to go ahead and distribute the negative sign and rewrite it. Please rewrite it. 9 m squared plus 7m minus 5m squared minus 5m because everyone in this house is a bad guy. Again, is that house on your street? Stay away from that house. Okay, 9 minus 5. I'm combining these because these are like terms. They're the same type of group. They're second graders. 9 minus 5 is 4m squared. 7 minus 5. Okay, I'm not making any prejudgments here. But that's a minus 5. 7 minus 5 is 2m. That's a positive 2m. And that's how we have to rewrite it. Okay. All right. So this is a skill that you guys are going to be practicing. We're going to be doing, we're using this skill in other aspects of it. So we're going to be multiplying polynomials, and we have to know how to combine like terms and not be afraid of it. To add or subtract like terms. And um, yeah, that's pretty much the, the skill that we're working on. Um, so. Please get this done, and I will work on something a little more um, interesting next time. Okay, thank you very much.